Today, we're looking at the Seosin Z2 by Sunway Tech. Inside the box, you'll find the Seosin Z2, and strangely, only one other item, a USB-A to USB-C cable. And of course, the Seosin Z2. A wireless dongle is sold separately, but unfortunately, I did not pick that up. This controller has a similar thumbstick layout as an Xbox Series controller. However, it's more akin to a Switch Pro controller. The ABXY buttons are mechanical keyboard switches, the Start, Select, and D-Pad all use membrane buttons. The thumbsticks are ALPS thumbsticks. There is also a home button for power. However, the Switch Capture button cannot be used as an Xbox Share button. There are microsuit shoulder buttons, full range analog triggers, and finally a USB-C port for wired connections. Now let's take a look at what makes the Seosin Z2 unique. If you notice, the Z2 uses a very interesting layout for its extra microswitch buttons that facilitate a claw-style grip. There are also trigger stops to shorten the distance required for full trigger activation, which is great for first-person shooters as well as fighting games. The Z2 also comes with dedicated buttons for a gyro, button remapping and macros, as well as a turbo. Also, you can choose between one of four wireless connection methods by holding one of the four ABXY buttons and then holding the home button for two seconds. For my testing, I will be using Bluetooth mode, which registers as a Bluetooth X input device on my Windows PC. And just when you thought we were done, for wired connections, the default mode is X input. However, you can have the controller recognized as a switch controller by holding the capture button first before plugging in. But before we do anything, we'll want to update the firmware by following the instructions on sunwaytech.com, found under Support, Firmware, and following the How to Update instructions. And with that, we can finally start talking about the things I like and don't like about this jam-packed, affordable Seosin Z2 from Sunway Tech. So, let's talk about the biggest feature about this controller. It's price. For $45.99, or $30.99, now that I've noticed it's on sale on Amazon right now, uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, what does that mean? That means you get a lot of functionality out of this controller despite its price point. For instance, for about $16 less at about $30, you can get a Power A Enhanced Series controller that comes with two back paddles. However, there's a trade-off. It needs to be wired. You can also spend about $6 more at about $52 for a first-party Xbox Core controller which can be connected wirelessly. However, there's also a trade-off. It does not come with back paddles. And so, with the Seosin Z2 sitting right between these two price-wise, you get all these features, but you also get or back paddles, and something I forgot to mention in the overview, you also get a rechargeable 1000 milliamp hour battery, you also get trigger stops, a gyro, a 2-in-1 remapper and macro builder, and a turbo. This is a lot of stuff that neither of these two controllers have, and all for about 46 US dollars. So what is wrong with the Seosin Z2? Why is it able to meet us at such a low price point despite having all these features? Well, one reason I can think of is, while the build construction quality is actually pretty good, like it feels solid in the hands when I try to bend it around, it's not creaking at all. But the feel and texture of the controller feels kind of cheap, and I, it's not necessarily because the plastic they use is cheap, because for all I know it could be using the same plastic as an Xbox Series controller. Even though it has nice features like textured grips, maybe it comes down to, for example, the straight edge designs on the tops and sides of the controller or on the shoulder buttons, because the moment you touch them and you feel those straight edges, it just doesn't feel great in the hands. Additionally, and this is probably a contentious point, is that these ABXY buttons, well for starters, these are actually BAYX buttons. These face buttons are technically mechanical switches. However, they are mechanical keyboard switches. That means that there is a lot of travel in these buttons before you get a click. And that is not a great gaming experience. And it's kind of strange because they actually use the proper micro switch buttons for the shoulders and rear paddles. So if they had just used these micro switches for these face buttons, I would have been happy. So that brings us to the shoulder buttons. I really like that they went for an additional shoulder button instead of having times four rear paddles for your fingers in the back. However, 
I do not like that all four buttons are extra shoulder buttons. So while this is an interesting take on using a pro style controller, maybe for ergonomic purposes, this kind of removes usability of other functionality around this section of the controller, meaning that you're probably not using the triggers. So what's the point of using these rear buttons here when you could have put them back here as paddles? And while we're still up here, let's talk about the triggers. Despite the way they look, they're actually not too bad, but there is one issue I have with them, and that is with their linearity. It's like the first half of the trigger is a very linear 0 to 25%, then the second half of the trigger is from 25% all the way to 100%. And that is just not a great experience if you're looking for precision, but Sunway Tech have said that they're working on an algorithm to try and make that more of a linear pull instead of what it is currently. Another possible contributing factor to the lower price point is the D-pad. So while this resembles an Xbox Core D-pad, it very much feels like it's on a bunch of membrane buttons. For instance, if we were to mess around with the D-pad on the Xbox Core controller, you can hear that it is using very clicky switches underneath this D-pad. However, compare that against the Siozen Z2, yeah, you can barely hear any kind of pressing behind this D-pad because it feels like it's on a bunch of membrane buttons instead. So while that's not really the end of the world, it's still a potential reason why they were able to keep the cost so low per unit. And I know, I know, it's weird because I'm like, I'm nitpicking reasons why this thing is so cheap. Really, it being cheap shouldn't be a bad thing. And it's a completely good thing because more people can afford this controller. Because at its core, it's actually a very solid controller. These thumbsticks, for example, even though they're potentiometer based and not hull effects, they have really nice spring tension to them. And when they spring back to a dead zone, that dead zone can be as small as three and a half percent which is really freaking nice. It's not perfect, but it is very, very good. And even though I have my gripes about these face buttons, in practice, you really stop noticing how they feel as you play for longer and longer game sessions. The only issue with these is when you put down the controller for a while and you pick it back up to play again, and you are quickly reminded just how sad these face buttons feel. But outside of that, it's really not an issue. I can execute complicated combos in games like Street Fighter without any problems, really. And while we're on the topic of Street Fighter, this is a good time to talk about the key mapping button that allows you to not only remap your extra back buttons, but also set up entire macros. This way, on a single press, you can annoy your friends with fireball spam without having to touch the controller again. Just keep in mind, these macros are not frame perfect, as can be seen in the changing frame counts on each button press. Now, let's say we instead play Call of Duty where we can not only take advantage of the key mapper to rebind an existing button to one of the extra buttons, for example, reload to the extra shoulder button, but now we can also turn on the gyro to control the right thumbstick. Do note, by pressing and holding the gyro button until it flashes, you can then assign a specific button or trigger as a gyro activator. That way, the gyro only activates when that button or trigger is pressed. And lastly, the turbo. By holding the button you want to repeat and then pressing the turbo button, from that point on, holding that button will repeat that action over and over. This can turn semi-automatic weapons to fully automatic, and combining this with the gyro can make even a full auto sniper rifle more controllable. And by repeating that turbo binding process, you can then make each button press a toggle so that the first press starts the repeat process, and the second press stops it. And finally, it's worth mentioning that there is an app called Keylinker that will give you extra control over the settings in your Siozen Z2. The controller must be turned on in Android mode, as indicated by the green light, and connected via the app on your phone. Now, as for my final thoughts on Sunway Tech's Shiozen Z2. For those who saw my top 5 gamepads for DCS World video, you probably recall that this gamepad was my number 1 recommended controller for DCS World newcomers. But does that same sentiment hold up to all other games? Well, after using this controller on and off for the last 7 months now, I can confidently say that this is the best bang for the buck you can get at the sub $50 USD price range but with a caveat. I recommend this controller 
only if you're not looking for a controller for your Xbox or PlayStation console, because Sunway Tech does not list those consoles as being compatible. Now, if you're instead looking for a controller that has Hall Effect thumbsticks, impulse triggers, and as much as six additional buttons, then check out my review of the Fly Digi Vader 3 Pro, as long as you're willing to spend nearly double this Shilzen Z2. 